Hello and welcome to the Doom Eternal post-game show. Uh, so I've completed, and I guess let's say in a broader sense, I platinumed Doom Eternal probably about a week and a half ago uh, as of now recording this. And I want to say the impression the game has left with me after about a week and a half of platinuming it, I still say it's pretty, pretty darn good. Um, really enjoyed uh, overall what I played. I did enjoy Doom 2016, if you remember some of the old like uh, PSN stores like Colin and Curtis in the Morning podcast. They could talk maybe a little bit about Doom 2016. Uh, that was a game that I quite enjoyed that I never really played a Doom game before. Kind of like that, you know, PC-centric id software kind of stuff before. Uh, and I quite enjoyed it. It wasn't really that big on the multiplayer at first, but... Um, we'll kind of touch on this game's multiplayer here in a little bit and what I kind of wished that would have been. Um, but yeah, so Doom Eternal, really how I just think of it is it's Doom 2016 on steroids. It's so much faster. Uh, you have so many more tools, uh, like, um, the dashing and like the shoulder mounted grenades. Um, you'd get like the double jump kind of like right off the bat, um, the blood punch, like, you know, I'll get into some of these things a little bit, but it really is just doom 2016 with just so much more velocity, I guess is a word. Um, and one thing that I would agree with a lot of people that I heard, um, talking about this game, uh, kind of in reviews and podcasts is I don't think we could ever go. I don't think it personally, I don't think I could go back to doom 2016 again. Like I have it on switch I don't have it on PS4 anymore, but I really think that would be a game that would just be hard to go back to because when you play that game, like you can't, you can't air dash, you can't uh, double jump through like maybe like half the game. Um, some of the like weapon abilities um, aren't as fluid, you know, just those kinds of things. Um, you don't have the blood punch. Uh, you know, I don't think your chainsaw is as effective and whatnot. Um you know, I could go on and on about just those kind of, um, I guess, systems that Doom 2016, you know, lacked that, that Doom Eternal just improved on. But yeah, uh, I mean, Doom Eternal just is probably one of the best evolutions of a game series just from like one to another. Like we always talk about like the leap that like Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 took, but I think in just terms of actual just gameplay and game in general, um, I think this might be be the best or at least my favorite um, in there. Uh, like you do have like the wall climbing is an addition. You also have like monkey bars as traversal that helps on that. Um, just kind of going through some of my notes here. Like the first thing that I even wrote down was just the soundtrack. And it is it is one of the greats. Um Mick Gordon uh, also did the soundtrack for Doom 2016. I didn't really love the Doom 2016 soundtrack, um, soundtrack, but I, I think this one really just punctuates so many more great moments. Um, you know, when that music started kicking in, um, you can really just start flying around, and that's when, like, I guess, like, the music times up uh, those moments very well that it just allows you to just go off and actually really feel like a badass really um yeah uh movement options add to the feeling uh, of just that kind of power um that you have whether it be with the monkey bars or the air dashes um it kind of reminded me of something like titanfall where like you can do the wall jump and you can double jump and you can like really cool like slide into like a kill or something like that um just those like just that fast chaotic um game that like movement options can just help so much um but talking about some of the weapons um weapons i i really enjoyed but um they are a lot somewhat similar to like kind of the base weapons are similar to what you found in doom 2016 um heavy cannon works just kind of how like the heavy machine gun did um 2016 you do have the micro missiles again uh you do have the scope that's on that gun instead of it being a um just a scope that you can zoom in. It's like a one shot kind of like sniper rifle kind of thing that I didn't enjoy as much. Um, I did like the plasma cannon. Uh, the upgrade I used a lot um, for modification was the shockwave that can explode nearby enemies. 
Um, I use that a lot. I think even when you upgrade that all the way, you can use the sh uh, shock wave and then like kind of overheats in a way so that like for maybe like 10 seconds or something like that, all of the next projectiles you fire are like red and they're like even more powerful shots. I use that um, quite a bit. Uh, the super shotgun now has a meat hook, which is one of the big um, parts they were showing in this game. Um, you know, of course, with a shotgun, you're going to need to get in close. And when you have like a Kako demon or uh, the pain elemental, I think, which is a new enemy type in this game, uh, there's a kind of more flying enemies. You can really just jump around and attach onto them and swing off them or just get in really close for a, just a powerful super shotgun shot. Um, it, it feels, it, it feels great. It's one of those uh, items that it, it's kind of the, uh, what I guess I could maybe call like the halo one pistol. Like it's, it's overpowered and it needs to be like, you know, it's, it's a really powerful weapon and you know, it, there's no, I, it's meant to be that way. I guess that's what I'm supposed to trying to say is that uh, it's meant to be powerful. It's meant to be um, just this blast of just firepower that can really get you out of some sticky situations. Uh, a couple of weapons, they use some of the same um, ammo types as other guns, but it's mainly the ballista and the chain gun. I didn't use those at all. Um, really the only times I use them were for the challenges that needed to be, or like for weapon points, if you like, Oh, you know, do this challenge or, you know, um, I think one of them was, um, use this arc blast, like, like 10 times on a Kako demon or something like that with the ballista. And that gives you your like weapon mastery. I just didn't use that, um, very much at all. And kind of on top of that, it's much easier to master weapons in this game as, there are like master tokens. I think there's like at least like feels like six or seven of them in the game. And um, I mean, I collected all of them because I'm just a completionist that loves to go around the levels and complete everything. Um, but I don't think those were at all in Doom 2016. And they actually just seemed a little bit more. I don't know if it's just easier or cheap is the right word, um, but it, it just seemed a lot easier to master weapons um, than in the last game. Um, we do have the blood punch that I mentioned earlier. It's kind of a meter that gets fill, uh, filled from glory kills. And of course, glory kills is um, kind of the big gruesome um, kills that you see. So when uh, an enemy starts like flashing, you can really get up there, press R3, rip them apart, do kind of some gory kill. Um, so the, what the blood punch is, is it's a more powerful punch. So if you go around just like even punching the I can't remember what they call them, but it's like the kind of zombie or demon that just kind of stumbles around a little bit. They just kind of like melee you a little bit. Um, like your punch does absolutely nothing. Like it just doesn't even hurt them. Like you could just sit there and keep punching and punching and punching. I feel like the only thing it's really good for is staggering enemies. Uh, but if you do have a blood punch filled up, it can just, just this kind of big wave of uh, just kind of damage that just, hits a lot of enemies and it can, it can take out a lot of enemies too. So um, it's really important to just keep, keep moving, keep doing glory kills, keep filling that blood punch. Cause it, it is absolutely worth using. Uh, one thing they also talked about, you can see probably in the art and trailers is there's a blade on the arm of the slayer, which is good for glory kills. And it gets showcased a lot in the glory kills, but it's not a weapon that is like manually controlled. So it's not like part of your melee suite, I guess, um, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but it's, it's still neat to be part of that. But I, I would have wished we could like, I don't know if that would have been part of a melee or just some way that the player could control that blade instead of just it being there kind of as a cosmetic thing and sometimes just showing up for uh for glory kills uh i did mention the grenades and the flame belch uh is a also a new thing which is uh kind of sets enemies on fire i don't know if it does really all that much damage but one thing it does do is it gives you uh, excuse me armor 
So uh, that and the chainsaw also uh, recharge over time. You can get pickups for it, um, or at least the chainsaw. Um, but, uh, you know, like, let's say you have an enemy that you can't chainsaw and um, you're completely out of ammo and you're like, well, I don't know what to do. You can't just melee him because the melee isn't going to do anything for you. Uh, they do sometimes spawn just little weaker enemies that kind of, you know, roam around so that you can chainsaw them, get some armor back. And it really is that um, kind of trifecta of a system where you can glory kill enemies for health, you chainsaw them for ammo, and you flame belch them for armor. And I think that's just a really good system um, that constantly kind of keeps you on your toes when you're thinking, okay, well, uh, health's getting low, can shoot this enemy, make them glow, then I can um, glory kill them, and then, okay, uh, I might need some armor as well, I've got kind of a bigger enemy, I can flame belch them they're gonna you know be on fire for a little bit because they're a strong enemy they're gonna keep dropping armor oh well now uh here's a small enemy i'm running out of ammo and this gun i really like you can go chainsaw that enemy get your ammo back uh, it's just a good system that kind of creates just a little bit of like a puzzle game um when you're playing um so uh yeah that was just uh something i do enjoy um also so talking about some of the levels um there's a lot more I'd say variety in this game um, than what the previous game was. So the previous game, it was mainly Hell and it was Mars and they were both really red, which kind of made the levels just run together, which didn't have much variety in terms of just what to look at in locales. Uh, this game as a you know true sequel to the previous game really kind of um, flushes out a lot of different environments. Uh, you do have some of like the hellscapes as well, um, but you have like like different like ancient civilizations that you go to that look different. There's kind of like an ice, not necessarily planet maybe, or whatever it is, but um, kind of area that you go to. Uh, so each level does feel distinct in that way, whereas the previous game just kind of all ran together. Uh, to kind of keep track of where you're at in each level, there's a map. And I think it works great. It, it does kind of, I know some people hate this term, but it does have that kind of Metroidvania kind of feel to it where sometimes you might have to travel back to areas. And so when uh, you actually get to the end of a level, uh, you do actually get the chance to fast travel to any kind of location you were previously at um, in the level. So let's say, uh, oh crap, I, I missed a... I missed a collectible, um, you know, near the beginning and I see it highlighted on the map. Um, but you know, there's really no way to get back to it. You can just instantly, and I mean instantly, um, fast travel to that location and fast travel back to where you currently are to like finish the, finish the level. Um, it's, I'm playing on a standard launch PlayStation four. So like the same PlayStation four I bought back in 2013, um, you know, sometimes you have problems with games running efficiently nowadays um, on that kind of hardware but i was so impressed uh at how this game ran i know i'm kind of getting uh onto another topic but um yeah like just how quick the loading times were into levels how their game ran it it just all worked so well and it really felt like i was playing on something like a pc or a ps4 pro maybe not pc but at least something like a ps4 pro or an xbox one x um that just how quick all of that led into to each other um so platforming uh i know this is a thing that a lot of people hated it's a lot of the um I guess negatives that uh, came with the game and they break up a lot of different firefights, but I actually enjoyed it. Um, I also did, and this is just a note. I did have the rune on that allowed for quicker in air movement, which kind of allowed me to like land on platforms and uh, navigate kind of the monkey bars a little bit easier, which maybe that was part of it. Um, but I really did not have any trouble um, doing this at all. Um, so I don't know if I, you know, just got lucky with some of the, some of the in-air movement stuff or the platforming, but I liked it. Uh, another big discussion that people hated about this game, when well, I hated, but really didn't like were a certain enemy type. And if you've completed the game, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, and that is the Marauders. Um, 
I kind of wrote down that they are awful at first, but the more I played it, so I ended up having to play the game twice. So uh, the first time I played the game, got all the collectibles uh, in that save file. And then the next save file, uh, I did the extra life mode, um, which was also required for the trophy. So um, played through it twice. And definitely through my second playthrough, I really didn't have any problem with the Marauders. Uh, I know there's um, kind of ballista, uh, super shotgun um, kind of methods to taking the Marauders out. But one thing that I thought worked really well was um, using the remote detonation on the rocket launcher. So, uh, of course, the Marauders being this enemy that just flies all over the map. Uh, just not like flying, but I guess like, you know, it's just so quick. Like you can get your sights on it and then he'll just, yeah, he'll, he'll just like dash somewhere else. And uh, sometimes, you know, you're supposed to attack the Marauder when his eyes glow green, which means he's about to attack. But there's like, sometimes he can cancel that attack, um, which is even more frustrating. Uh, but yeah, I, I found the rocket launcher with remote detonation just to kind of get behind. Um, so like, you know, I'll shoot a rocket It'll go past him, so it'll go past his shield, and then you can remote detonate that, and that kind of area effect damage would still hurt him. Um, they are tough. I, I think, really, uh, the Marauders are more of an annoyance in the game. I really thought they slowed down the pace of the game um, really slowly. So, like, you're getting into, like, a big firefight, and then you just completely have this just enemy type that completely just slows everything down and you're like oh my gosh i gotta go play this thing it's i thought it was was pretty annoying um but yeah the more i played and even when i played through my second playthrough i just thought i was gonna absolutely hate playing through that game all over again just to fight the marauders but uh it they weren't really that tough there was a, a few encounters that you can can skip um, so it didn't really affect me all that much. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with with everybody's points there on the Marauder. Uh, in terms of story and lore, uh, there's a lot of lore in this game. And even some lore that I've tried to look up YouTube videos on. And they don't really make all that much sense at times. Um, like kind of just some uh, like plot hole kind of things. Like why is this character doing this? If this wasn't supposed to... Like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I really like the lore, though. I don't know, um, you know, how much id Software and Bethesda is wanting to explore, like, this universe, but I've actually quite enjoyed a lot of the lore uh, about the demons and um, the sentinels and the night, whatever, the night sentinels, those kinds of things, and how the marauders came to be. Um, you know, the main part of the story, and I won't go into spoilers here, but, you know, the main, I guess, kind of story, how the game starts is that the Slayer is back and he is trying to take out the three hell priests um, which are part of the invasion of earth so like each of them have like a certain area um that they involve i guess they um invade earth and you know like taking out one of them takes out like 33 percent of the demons that were invading earth that kind of thing so you're supposed to go after them and of course there's other like little twists and turns and then you even bigger bad guy and a big final boss that i i wasn't too big a fan of um but i know other people did kind of like it um so there is a hub world in this game and i don't know if this is just the new bethesda thing uh, but this new uh hub area is called the fortress of doom and the reason i kind of mentioned i worry about it was that uh, i played wolfenstein uh you know new order and then uh, Wolfenstein 2, and then, of course, you Wolfenstein Youngblood. And each of them, especially 2 and Youngblood, had just the most confusing hub worlds unimaginable. That was just like, why is this here? This is just annoying. I'm getting lost. I just want to go to the next mission. Um, the Fortress of Doom uh, is much better. There's still a couple times I got lost. I was like, what floor am I on or what am I doing again? Um, but... It really wasn't that bad. Really, the biggest thing the Fortress of Doom has is just collectibles um, that you can run around and grab. Uh, and there's like secrets and things to unlock. You'll find these like batteries throughout each of the levels. Uh, I can't remember they're just Sentinel batteries or whatever. And you can unlock uh, different upgrades and things like that. So it's not really that 
big a deal. You know, you're not like, oh, well, now I got to go talk to this person or something like that. Nothing like that. So I did actually enjoy the Fortress of Doom. Uh, I did end up having more, I think, Sentinel batteries and um, like, I don't remember what, whatever the tokens were. I can't remember what they were called specifically. I think I had more of them left over um, or like weapon points as well. And I think maybe that'll be part of the DLC. I'm not really sure. Um, so I got the deluxe edition. So I do think I have um, the, I guess, year one pass is what they called it or whatnot. You can actually check out that um, video on my YouTube channel, just kind of the unboxing and the little uh, lunch box that it came with. So of course, nothing says doom like a lunch box to take your Slayer filled meals with you on the go, I guess. I don't know. So again, that's just kind of like campaign um, in general. It took me I don't know, maybe like 15 hours first time through. Uh, and then definitely, you know, the next time you you really know what to do, you can fly through it um, pretty quickly. Um, again, I actually mainly just played on the easiest difficulty setting. I just want to get through this game. Uh, there's a lot of other games coming out. And, um, you know, even if I had to play the game on the hardest difficulty, uh, probably not being Ultra Nightmare, which is a one-time kill kind of thing. Um, but um yeah i i i quite enjoyed the campaign um i enjoyed um you know kind of where the story brought i like the new different um kind of areas that the game tried to show off uh i would be really interested to see what a sequel to this game would be because i really just don't even know what they could do at this point um i really feel like there was it it just feels like there was nothing left on the cutting room floor for this game it was like they threw every mechanic every weapon all of that kind of stuff and i didn't even mention the new like bfg 9000 i think something like that i don't remember what it was um but you know that kind of is a gun that takes out everyone there's also um the um i can't remember what it's called but it's the big red sword you've probably seen um, in a lot of different uh, art and media, um, which it's like kind of like the Crucible. I think maybe that's what it is called back from like Doom 2016 at the very end. It's like this big red blade. And there's other, um, you know, characters from Doom 2016 that come back into this game that play pretty pivotal roles in the story and the lore for that matter. Um, but yeah, I, I just really don't know what they could do campaign wise. I mean, if they just gave me more of what they already have which i think they're going to be doing that um in dlc which it sounds like is going to be single player dlc which is not going to be multiplayer dlc which kind of transitions my thoughts over to battle mode so let's just say that once i got all of the trophies in battle mode which is the 2v1 multiplayer in doom eternal once i got all of the trophies i never played battle mode again so i put uh just kind of in my notes i just thought it was just nothing more than a short attraction really uh, i don't think it has that much depth and uh, at least on console from what i've been hearing it's ex and, you know in my testament that i can see as well uh, it is extremely easy for the demons to win um, if you have you know, you don't even really have to have two demons that are communicating on headset, really. Like, if you just have two demons just completely doing two separate things, the Slayer is going to win. But if you basically have two demons just flying around attacking the Slayer, the demons are going to win pretty much every single time. So I played 25 matches. Um, and so there's a trophy also for that as well for playing 25 battle mode matches played that 25 matches and not once did the slayer win any of the times i was playing on the demons i was also playing as slayer there was a couple times they got close playing as the slayer but not any time did the slayer win um after a while i did actually win a few matches as the slayer which i thought was it's really just incredible that i even won and I don't know if just from what I've seen online, it's because like PC players kind of have that kind of faster reaction, I guess, with um, mouse and keyboard or like, you know, they can turn their sensitivity up all the way so they can fly around the map a lot easier. I'm not really sure, but 
for uh you know a console peasant like me i guess um it was just really extremely hard for the slayer to win so um you know if the slayer kills one of the demons you only have 20 seconds to eliminate the other demon before that other demon you just killed respawned which i think that ends way too fast and sometimes you've got you know um maps that have just a lot of you know barriers in front of it and so you could kill one of the demons and you'll have absolutely no idea where the other one is and you're just like going around the map trying to find it and you only have 20 seconds to begin with and so basically when one demon dies the other one just runs away and waits for the 20 seconds for the other one to respawn um i just didn't enjoy that aspect of way it just really felt kind of cheap and i don't know if they've patched it yet or if they've done any hot fixes to it or whatever they could do um, but I really think they need to kind of balance it out a little bit better on the console side. Um, yeah, again, I, I, I played it just long enough just to get the trophies. Haven't touched it since. There's like really the only thing to keep you playing is just like some milestones. And the other milestones are just like play 25 matches, play 50 matches as a Slayer, play 75 matches as a Demon, you know, those kind of things. And I think once you do that, you just unlock new cosmetics for the demons and the marauder or you know like the marauder is one of them and like the revenant and pain elemental and a mancubus um like you know you just have like different backgrounds different banners different you know victory poses like you know that kind of um multiplayer stuff which i just don't really see people playing it very much and i know a lot of people were wanting more traditional multiplayer which um doom 2016 did have and i actually kind of enjoyed it um didn't really enjoy it from like the beta standpoint i thought it was really kind of weird but um i did actually quite enjoy it once i got my hands on the full thing um but yeah i just i don't know i think they're not gonna add i don't think they're gonna add traditional multiplayer to it they're just not gonna do that and i think even um listening to some of hugo martin's kind of comments about like hey why we don't have traditional multiplayer and i think what's kind of the plan all along is like well we have a game like that it's called quake champions and that's only on pc but that is that kind of uh multiplayer suite that you'd get somewhere similar to a doom game but yeah i, I think battle mode just really falls flat i like the idea asymmetrical multiplayer is really becoming like the new big thing recently um in the coming years and even you know we do have this battle mode we do have resident evil resistance which is a 4v1 thing we got the predator hunting grounds game coming out which is another 4v1 game um i mean again i just like the idea of it but there's just not that much depth there for people wanting to play it for like an hour or two. And I think um, even the trophies, you can just, I think I was looking online and I think you can just earn all of them in private matches. So you can just team up with a friend or, you know, find people online and just go into a private match and just earn the trophies that way. And the hardest one I felt was, um, I think it was like killing 200 enemies total, which, you know, <laughs> it would even get to a point where if I was the slayer, you know, I thought that was the easiest way to do it. If there was the Slayer and I killed one of the demons, I intentionally didn't kill the other one because I knew the other demon was going to respawn with half health and then I'll just go kill him again. So I was ending matches with like, you know, sometimes like 10, 11, 12 kills and you start doing that pretty quickly and you're going to get to 200. Not, not entirely um, grindy, but it was a little grindy. Do I think battle mode lessens the package of Doom Eternal? Not necessarily, but I think that's definitely a thing that I think this game actually would have been stronger without it in a way. Um, you know, and the reason I say that is like, I feel like everything I've seen about battle mode has just kind of been a negative. And if you just released Doom Eternal just being that single player, I think that would have a more lasting appeal to people rather than, oh yeah, there's this great campaign and then there's this multiplayer that I was like, why does this exist? That kind of thing um so maybe that maybe that's a positive maybe that's a negative i don't really know um i don't really think they're gonna maybe they'll have other modes for battle mode i don't really know um for a 2v1 kind of thing uh, i don't really know their plans of it. it could be a thing that they just release and then just don't touch 
it could be a thing that they want to keep updating and add new things. I know there's like seasons that's kind of like a battle pass looking thing and you don't actually pay for it, but um, you know, you earn this much XP, either it be in battle mode or the main campaign, you'll unlock new cosmetics and new skins for your slayer, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I think Doom Eternal um, is going to be one of those games maybe towards the end of the year that might be popping up on game of the year lists. And if it's not popping up on game of the year list, it's at least popping up on best shooter categories, um, which I, I think uh, it absolutely deserves to be there um, with them. I enjoyed the previous game. I really enjoyed this game. Um, I think I'm just ready for more DLC, I guess. Um, and yeah, even though when I platinumed it, I really felt like I was kind of done with the game. Like there's like the only real thing to keep going after is if you beat the game on like different difficulties and stuff, all it is, is just more cosmetic stuff. And I was like, I don't really want that stuff. I mean, so, um, went through the Slayer gates, which kind of just give you like weapon points, which are like really kind of tough battle encounters. I did all those got all the albums, got all the toys, got all the cheat codes, all of that kind of stuff I did in my first playthrough. Um, just being a completionist, I was not going to leave an area until I have absolutely everything. And that really quick um, fast travel um, system just works so well. I, I think that's maybe the most impressive part of this game is just how well this game loaded and how well this game ran on my launch PS4. Um, but with that said, um, I think that's really all that needs to be said about Doom Eternal. I'm sure I'll probably talk about this game at some point, uh, maybe when the DLC comes out. Uh, but let me know how you enjoyed Doom Eternal. Uh, didn't want to touch too much on spoilers of like story related stuff. Uh, there's a lot of lore videos out there. I encourage everyone to go out there and look at those because I would not be able to do as good a job as those other youtubers and content creators do um so definitely check those out there's a lot of really great ones out there even if you just type in like doom eternal lore or story spoiler or something like that you're going to get a lot of videos about why this happens why that happens how this codex entry affects this thing in doom 2016 or even the previous doom games in general um, there's a lot of smart people out there and they do a lot of cool stuff so uh, i just thought i'd jump on here kind of give some of my quick thoughts about doom eternal and let me know if you're playing it uh let me know what you thought of the game uh let me know what you think of what id software should do next what you think some of the dlc would be um and we'll see you next time goodbye